time has expired, and I will now recognize Representative Miller Meeks for five minutes for her questions. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Uh, Chair, Representative Foster. First, I'd like to thank the Chairman and the Ranking Member for holding this important nonpartisan hearing today. And I would like to thank our witnesses for their testimony, even those that are virtually, or also those that are virtually. Um, I have been to every county in my district, all 24 counties in southeast Iowa, to administer the COVID-19 vaccines. I also attended uh, a function uh, on getting young people to run for office and administered vaccines there when a pharmacist brought uh, the vaccine. I've also penned an op-ed um, on this topic with my colleague, Representative Foster, as he indicated, which was published today in USA Today on this exact topic. And I've done multiple interviews and sent letters encouraging the American people to get vaccinated. I cannot emphasize how important I think it is to get vaccinated so that we can all return to normal. To date, three vaccines are approved under the Food and Drug Administration emergency use authorization process. And Dr. Adams, you mentioned something which is near and dear to my heart and for which I and other members of the Doctors Caucus, uh, I'm a MD and a former state director of the Iowa Department of Public Health, sent to the FDA talking about this exact issue. Can you explain how the emergency use authorization is different from the full biologics license application approval? Mm. Well, thank, you very much for that. That, thank you very much for that question. And it is important for people to understand that during the EUA process, uh, we are, well, the FDA is evaluating to determine whether or not the risk is less than the benefit of an intervention that hasn't gone through the full licensure process. And so it is, a, it is a bar that is especially important in the midst of a pandemic because people are dying each and every day from COVID-19. But it is certainly not full licensure. Now that said, uh, I want to hit a point that Representative Scalise mentioned earlier. 300 plus million people vaccinated so far in this country, or, or doses delivered in this country. Uh, this vaccine is, is, again, been administered to more people, and we have more safety data on it at this point than we've had for any other vaccine in history, mm -hmm. in history at this point of administering it to people. So I, as a doctor, feel it's safe. I got vaccinated. My 15 and 16-year-olds have been vaccinated. But that said, I continue to hear from the public that this, the lack of an update on licensure is something that's hanging over their heads, and that's why it's important that the committee address this. So you would agree with me and other members of the Doctors Caucus when we have asked the FDA to look at real-world evidence of the millions of vaccines administered both in the United States and globally, mm -hmm. that that should be enough study data information to give full authorization for these vaccines? Well, absolutely. Uh, Dr. Fauci and I worked closely and Dr. Collins from the National Institutes of Health with these organizations throughout the process to get to EUA. And we looked at data within the United States and outside of the United States. And when you go beyond the United States, you're well over 300 million doses that have been administered. We have even more safety data. Uh, I just personally, as a physician and as someone who was inside this process, really myself don't understand why we haven't had more of an update yet. Thank you for that. And, and Dr. Adams, I want to say also that uh, I remember meeting you at an ASTO meeting uh, here, and so it's a pleasure to see you again. Um, I'd also like to say that um, you mentioned herd immunity. And in April in this committee, I asked Dr. Fauci and Dr. Walensky both for herd immunity and the typical average of herd immunity, which you have said is around 70 percent. Granted, we don't know what it is for this virus, but I think it's important, and I'm in an agricultural state, we know what herd immunity is, and the goal is to get as many people vaccinated as possible, and especially in the risk groups. Uh, but you also mentioned about side effects, and um, there's so many questions I would love to ask, but I'm, I'm going to direct this next question to Ms. Bush. Uh, and Ms. Bush, your testimony was very compelling because you mentioned the anxiety that you had given your health uh, risk. But we also know that for children, there are tremendous mental health effects associated with not being in a normal school environment, mm -hmm. coupled with stunted social and emotional growth of children 12 and over, and it far outweighs the potential effects of a vaccine. So what would you say to young people and to parents of uh, children between 12 and 18 as far as getting the vaccine? Well, I think, again, you know, to the doctor's points, this is about how we protect our communities. 
I might have been less at risk than my parents mm -hmm. who are older and both immunocompromised, but I still got vaccinated for them and admittedly was terrified of this. And I think the notion that households like some of our friends who have some children over 12 and some children under 12 could be better protected if kids 12 to 18 were vaccinated. The likelihood that as we reach closer and closer to herd immunity, we will have less incidence of infection is incredibly important. And it's our responsibility, in my opinion, to get vaccinated for ourselves, our loved ones, and also for those who can't for immunocompromised people, immunocompromised children. This is, a, this is a community action that we can take, and hopefully the sooner we reach that herd immunity, the sooner we cross that threshold, all of these kids will be able to get back to the in-person learning that they need for their mental health and also for their cognitive development. Thank you so much, and uh, Mr. Chair, I know that my time has expired, but I just wanted to say that I thank the witnesses for talking about uh, ending the mask mandate. We asked about this in April, given the data we had, and it should have been ended earlier, so that people could see there was a, another benefit to getting vaccinated, um, other than the lottery system, which I found tremendously interesting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield my time.